So our next speaker is going to be uh, Tuan Tuan Liu. Uh, she's a PhD student at MIT, and she is going to talk about consensus. Tuan Tuan, welcome, and give a round of applause to her. Hi, everyone. I'm Kwan Kwan. Thank you for the introduction. Um, just to give a bit more background, I am a TCS uh, grad student, meaning a theoretical computer science grad student, um, and also affiliated with the MIT Digital Currency Initiative. So because of my background, my presentation today will be a bit on the theoretical side. Um, but hopefully a lot of these things that I talk about will be able to be implemented in practical crypto systems. And in fact, some of these are already implemented in practical crypto systems. And I'll mention which one of these are already in deployment as I go through the presentation. So more specifically, I will be talking about consensus under adaptive adversaries. And I'll explain what adaptive adversaries are as I go through my presentation. So to start, what is consensus? Uh, consensus is a scheme or protocol for reaching agreement on a value. So some of the properties we want in a good consensus protocol is that we want everybody to agree on the same value. Um, for example, if you have some number of players participating in this protocol who are proposing different values, you eventually want them to agree on the same value after running your protocol. So if you just have this requirement, there's a very trivial uh, protocol that you can run among these people. So they can all get together before they start running the protocol and say, we're all going to agree on A, regardless of what anybody proposes. So if you run this protocol, everybody will of course agree on the same value, but it's not a very useful protocol because you never agree on different things. So in addition to this one property, we will also want a second property, which is if everybody starts with the same value, you want to agree on that value. So for example here, the trivial protocol will not work because everybody wants to agree on the value B. So agreeing on A will not satisfy this condition. So here, what you want is that you want everybody to agree on B at the end of running your protocol. In addition, it wouldn't be a very interesting protocol if it can only work among people who are honest. So you want your consensus protocol to also reach agreement in, even in the presence of adversaries. So if you have an adversarial node that is uh, proposing some arbitrary value and the honest players in your protocol are proposing B, you still want everybody to agree on the value B at the end. I'm going to define some additional terms that I will use in, in the rest of my presentation. Uh, so the first is liveness. You want your protocol to continue, continuously agree on new values. So you want everybody to make progress. You want new blocks to be added to your blockchain. So liveness is basically just saying, if your protocol is live, then progress is being made. You also want your protocol to be safe. Uh, so the safety requirement ensures that all honest players agree on the same history of values that are committed or agreed upon. So again, your protocol is not going to be very useful if everybody believes a different set of transactions were made in your blockchain. So safety just ensures that everybody has the same log or history of committed values. So now uh, consensus is nowadays being used on cryptocurrencies that should take millions or billions of participants. So because you have such a large number of participants in your network, you don't want every single participant to set, send a message or multiple messages to every other participant in your network because that would flood the network with way too many messages. So essentially what you want is you want a small number of honest nodes to talk before you reach consensus on a particular value. You don't want everybody in the network to send a bunch of messages. In addition, because these consensus protocols are used for cryptocurrencies, uh, monetary gains can be made from targeted attacks by adversaries. 
And specifically, because we're also requiring that only a small number of honest nodes talk before reaching consensus, these attackers can observe the network before determining which of these honest nodes are the ones that are talking, are the ones that are important. And then after they observe which ones are important, they can attack these important players. So we also want protocols that are robust against such strong adversaries. And finally, we know that some crypto systems currently are uh, sat uh, both uh, satisfy both of these properties. For example, Bitcoin is one such crypto system that satisfies both of these properties. But unfortunately, Bitcoin uses um, energy wasting proofs of work. So in addition, we also want to come up with crypto systems that avoid such energy wasting proofs of work, but also satisfy both of these desirable properties. So I'll start with uh, what we can do to solve the first problem, which is requiring only a small number of honest nodes to talk. So one way that uh, some crypto systems in deployment have solved this problem is via cryptographic sortition, which is introduced by Algorand. Um, for cryptographic sortition, you elect a small committee at random and run your protocol, consensus protocol, among these players in the small committee. So what this essentially means is that you have a small number of people who are proposing blocks, and you also have a small number of voters who are voting on these blocks, which means that the total number of messages sent in your network is also small. And in order for this to also work with adversaries, you want individual nodes to decide membership secretly. And you also want membership to be decided at random. But you, even though you're deciding these memberships privately and secretly, you want to be able to prove to other people in the network that you are on a committee of voters or you are a proposer. So, the cryptographic sortition has been adopted by a number of companies which are currently in existence. Algorand, definitely, um, Definity, Filecoin, Witnet, and others. So cryptographic sortition basically satisfy the first property that we want, which is a small number of nodes are talking. Now I'll go into uh, the more complicated uh, aspect of these large scale crypto consensus protocols, which is we want protocols that are robust against strong adversaries. So traditional consensus protocols generally considered only static adversaries, meaning that the players which are adversarial were known beforehand. So you assume there exists an adversary they choose some number of nodes to corrupt before you run the protocol without knowing exactly which people are important as you're running the protocol. So they choose these number of Byzantine nodes, and then you run your consensus protocol and you reach agreement. But again, as I mentioned before, large monetary gain will obviously lead to stronger, uh, what we call adaptive adversaries, meaning that these adversaries observe the network and what messages are sent before they start attacking crucial players in your protocol. So here, uh, we can assume that the protocol starts with little or no um, adversarial nodes. Then you run the protocol. So you run the protocol, a leader gets elected. Suppose this node in blue is a leader. Uh, the adversary sees that this person has been elected as leader, and then they can decide immediately to corrupt this person. So they can corrupt this person using bribes, DDoSs, hacking, a variety of ways. And after they corrupt this person, they can immediately per perform malicious actions. So obviously this has a very adversary, uh, adverse effect on the protocol because this person as leader will probably be, be taking a very important role, such as proposing the next block 
So if an adversary corrupts this leader, then they will have a very negative influence on the protocol. So here are some of the case studies of what uh, such adaptive adversaries can do uh, in certain protocols. So for protocols which have predictable leader schedules, the adversary can corrupt the leader immediately before they are elected. So basically this violates liveness because it prevents honest leaders from being elected. So if malicious leaders will continuously be elected and propose junk proposals in which people will not agree upon or do other, other kind of uh, malicious activity. So even if you don't have a predictable leader schedule, you can still corrupt a leader right after election. So what can a leader do after it's been corrupted? They can send many, many more messages, flood the network with many junk proposals, and then voters will not be able to decide on the particular proposal. So this also violates liveness because voters will then have a bunch of junk proposals to choose from, then they won't be able to choose a particular one to vote upon. Uh, if you have small numbers of committee members, then uh, adaptive adversary can corrupt the committee members right after election. Uh, meaning that these committee members after they are corrupted will send votes for every proposal. So if the leader is also malicious and sends a bunch of proposals, these committee members will just send a vote for each one of them instead of one. And then other honest replicas which are not speaking will get confused about which proposal will, uh, should be committed by them. And if they uh, receive some of these votes and not others, they will agree on different proposals, which violates safety. So let me talk about how we can solve some of these problems that we saw uh, with these case studies. So because cryptographic sortition determines uh, proposers and committee members privately and secretly, and also uniformly at random, it solves the problem of predictable leader schedules. But it doesn't solve the problem about uh, of how do we deal with corruption after a leader is elected. So we can use what is called player replaceability, which goes part of the way towards solving this problem of corruption after election. Uh, basically, player replaceability says that each leader or committee member speaks once before the next committee is elected. So it doesn't give too much influence to a particular leader or a particular committee member. And we also need something else to completely solve this problem. And the something else that a lot of these current crypto systems are assuming or have adopted is the key erasure model where participants are required to raise keys and also generate new keys before announcing their leader committee membership. So what this essentially means is that if a user erases their keys that they used to vote, they cannot vote again, even if somebody corrupts them and tries to make them vote again because they don't have their keys anymore. So just a bit more detail about the key erasure model. So again, these crypto systems are assuming that the keys can be erased at will arbitrarily from a player's storage without any recovery possibilities. So let's talk about the practical implications of this model. Uh, erasures in real life are hard to implement both in terms of hardware and software. There could be hardware failures uh, when you're trying to erase something in your hardware, your, system, your computer could just have fault-tolerant backups, in which case, if you don't program your software to erase these backups, they'll still be on your computer. There could be human errors in implementing these erasures in software and in hardware. So basically, erasures are hard to implement in real systems. And also, there exists social uh, attacks that that could be done. For example, somebody could bribe you to retain and sell your old keys. So instead of you 
having any incentive to erase your old keys, you could be bribed to sell them later. So, so because of these issues, it is important to explore alternatives to key erasure to solve the problem of corrupting leaders and committee members after election. There have been a number of solutions that are proposed. So these uh, solutions are uh, theoretical papers. Uh, they have, as far as I know, have not been implemented in real life crypto systems, but perhaps they can be in the future. So basically the first solution is to tie eligibility on a committee to your specific vote. So what we call, uh, we call this type of strategy vote specific eligibility. Uh, basically, if you're given some vote that you want to vote for, and here we're only talking about binary votes, meaning that for binary uh, Byzantine agreement, we define it as the uh, honest replicas are only allowed to propose one or zero. So they can't propose any other values. So here we're pressing into uh, this function that we use for vote specific eligibility, either one or zero and the round number. So we're basically mining a vote for either one or zero. So honest replicas using this protocol will either mine a vote for one or zero, but adversaries can mine for both. But because we're only considering two, uh, two possible values to propose, uh, the membership in the committee is tied to the vote and with high probability of adversaries can't generate enough votes for both of these values. So again, we're talking here about binary agreement. A way to extend this to block agreement is we pass in the block with transactions to the voting function, to the vote generating function. An adversarial strategy to attack this will be to create an arbitrarily large number of transactions to attempt to create a block that obtains a disproportionate number of adversarial votes. So what essentially this dissolves into is a proof of work. If you have a lot of parallel ability, you can generate a lot of blocks to try to grind for lots of adversarial votes. So in order to try to solve for this vote grinding, um, another paper consensus through herding uh, came up with this protocol that assigns scores to transactions by age, which means that you want to ensure that older transactions are included in the committed block, a block which has a lot of old transactions uh, where age is defined by when you receive the transaction. Uh, a block which contains a lot of these older transactions will have a higher score. So the major issue with this particular proposal is that it is unclear how to adapt such a scheme to work with transaction fees. Because we're assigning scores to transactions by age, it's unclear whether this protocol can be made to work when we're say assigning scores by transaction fees instead of age. Since this protocol uh, depends a lot on when a transaction is received by a player. So as I mentioned, there exists some current solutions for both of these additional desirable properties. Uh, the first is a lot of these solutions have caveats. For example, the memory erasure model is a caveat. Um, so a lot of these solutions have partially solved for these desirable properties. Um, for example, vote specific eligibility dissolves into proofs of work um, due to vote grinding. So we want something that achieves these desirables without using the key erasure model and without grinding. So we proposed um, an additional solution. Um, we, along with Neha and Tej, and the intuition uh, behind our solution is that 
each block proposal will require it to take some number of time steps, even for parallel adversaries. We say a round takes some fixed amount of time, just enough time for you to compute your first block proposal, but not enough time for you to propose two di different blocks before the next round occurs because you just don't have enough time before the round rolls over to the next round. So essentially the intuition behind our scheme is that we want you to commit to your block before you send it. So if you want to send a specific block, you have to put in some amount of time. And even if an adversary corrupts you and tries to make you send a different block, the adversary does not have enough time to make you send a different block before the round rolls over. And once the round rolls over, you'll probably not be the leader and not be able to propose a new block anyways. So the way that we ensure that people take a certain amount of time before they propose a block is that we use what is called a verifiable delay function or a VDF. And this is a construct that uh, creates a function that takes some time D where D is variable, you can determine D upon your setup. So this function takes some time D to compute given some input, uh, even if you are given a parallel computer, but the output can be verified quickly. So let me just deconstruct this definition a little bit more. Basically this function ensures that for any honest player, you take the same amount of time to compute the BDF. So no more than approximately D time for any honest player. But even for an adversary who is parallel, you cannot compute the solution in less than D time. And finally, the output of this function is uh, unique, meaning the adversarial al algorithm cannot compute an output that is not equal to the intended output from the function. And most importantly, most importantly, even though computing the function or computing the output is fast, uh, is slow, uh, verification is fast. So you take some required amount of time to compute the output, but anybody can verify your output very quickly. So there exists some additional um, details in our protocol, um, as well as proofs that our protocol works. Uh, I encourage you to ask questions after this presentation during the question time or ask any of us uh, if you have additional questions. Um, but basically, we, in summary, propose a different solution to satisfy the last two uh, desirables. Um, of course, whether VDFs uh, that uh, have our desired properties are feasible in real life is a major question. Therefore, um, that's the reason why the check marks are blue instead of green. Um, but hopefully we hope that our theoretical solution will have important practical applications as well. So I'm happy to take questions now. Uh, yeah, so we have time to a couple of questions. since that we have no questions. Huh? So, yeah, Kwan Kwan, thanks very much for your presentation. So, uh, once again, a round of applause to Kwan Kwan.